Hey, puppy trades. I want to do a video analysis update on my top 10 exchange traded funds, also known as ETFs for 2022 and beyond. So let's start with the NASDAQ before we get into the list. It is a one, two, three, four, five wave one. And I believe an ABC correction is ending wave two near the 78.6% retracement. So if the Qs are above 350, which is getting pretty tight, I expect the length of wave one placed at the wave two low will give a minimum wave three target of 415. From there, I'd expect a shallow wave four correction that retests the wave one high before a wave five that is at least the length of wave one placed at the wave four low. Now, realistically, if this is a wave three that begins, it's going to go much further than the length of wave one placed at the wave two low. Normally, wave three goes all the way to the 161.8% extension of wave one. Then there's a wave four that retests the wave one high before a wave five that is at least the length of wave one placed at the wave four low. So if wave four retests the wave one high and wave five is at least the length of wave one placed at the wave four low, what we could see is a situation where in the bigger picture, the NASDAQ is heading into the 460s. So when we look at Microsoft right now, we get a little better downside levels for what could happen because we're getting close to 350. So this is why I think it's really important to tr trade the market as a whole, right? Because Microsoft is a, is a lot further from 280 than the Qs are from 350. I believe this is a one, two, three, four, five wave one for Microsoft. Now an ABC correction is ending wave two between the 61.8 and 78.6% retracement. So if we're above 280, the length of wave one placed at the wave too low says we could have a very fast rally to 370 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. So Microsoft is pointing to the idea that we could go significantly higher. And if we look at a, a timing perspective, this whole wave one rally is about six or seven weeks. So the length of wave one plays with way too low, not only could take Microsoft up to 370, but it could do it rather quickly. And what I've just kind of described with Microsoft and with the NASDAQ is what we would refer to in the future as a melt up. And also what we would notice in the future is nearly perfectly in line with the past 60 years of seasonality for what happens during a midterm year. So seasonality is kind of like any other indicator. It adds statistical importance, but I can't tell my broker about it. We saw seasonality play out nearly perfectly for the S&P in 2021. Most recently, uh, we saw oil do quite well right on cue with the winter outperformance uh, caused by cold weather. So if we look at the past, you know, 50, 60 years of what happens during a midterm year, it's playing out pretty well right now. And it lines up with the wave theory where there is a bear trap in mid-January, late January, followed by a melt-up into March and April. So I think very aggressively, a tech melt-up could happen into the March quad. More conservatively, it could happen into the June quad witching date. But what would happen if that happened? What if we woke up in April and we saw the queues in the, the mid-400s right? Maybe spy in the lower to mid 500s. Well, I would be looking for a kid at the bus stop moment where we sell in May and we actually stay away for the past couple of years. It was sell in May and then, you know, get back in really quickly, right? What we've seen sometimes during midterm years is it's sell in May and, and actually stay away. So for the past 60 years, we have a bear trap, in the beginning of the year, right around mid to late January, then we have a melt up into April during a midterm year. Then a pretty substantial bear market begins uh, right around May. So what I could see is that a lot of the ETFs that we're going to go over in this video are the only ETFs in the only sectors that are providing alpha during this time and maybe even beyond this time. So We've called a lot of, you know, growth stocks. We've called a lot of value stocks, a lot of precious metals, weak losers. And what I could see is in the future, those sectors, those ETFs are the only things providing alpha in the market. So I'm pretty interested in stuff that is proven to not move in a straight line with the market as a lot of growth stocks, a lot of Chinese stocks, a lot of precious metals have in 2021. If we look at financials right now, I don't think financials are going to uh, do the opposite of SPY. I think that this is a lot of good evidence. But what we could see is that the financials continue the theme of value outperformance in the short term. We have a wave one and an ABC wave two. But the most important count is just from this low of about 920. I believe this is another wave one and an ABC wave two. And then from this low, yes, another wave one and another wave two at the 61.8% retracement. 
So a lot of people are going to say puppy trades. I don't care about financials, right? Well, if the financials are going to go the length of wave one, places the wave too low in the short term to 43 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher and the wave five target is 46, well, the stock market probably won't be crashing during that time. And I believe waves one, two, three, four, and five would complete this red wave three in the future. So I think that the financials in the short term could be a nice setup if we're above very tightly would be 37 i think more realistically would be 36 to 34.90 then we could see xlf do quite well the length of way one place the way too low says that not only financials but also most likely the entire market is setting a pretty nice bear trap right now the length of way one place the way too low can take xlf up to 43 before a shallow way four and a way five higher realistically wave three would go much further than 43 but all in all, waves one, two, three, four, and five can take XLF to 46. And that would just end this red wave three, in my opinion. So 46 wouldn't be the top. Here's Citigroup and MetLife Financial. What I'm going to try to do in this video is talk about the sector ETF, talk about a few names that can kind of supplement the chart. So this is Citibank. It's a wave one and an ABC wave two. I believe that most conservatively, this is a wave three and an ABC wave four that ended at the 50% retracement. So if we're above 55 the length of wave one place of the wave four low says that we're going to see that Citibank is the next bank that will go break this late May high that most of the financials formed, at least the ones that are in XLF. So I think Citibank could follow Berkshire Hathaway. It could follow Aflac and AIG. It could follow MetLife above the late May high. The length of wave one place of the wave four low says Citibank can go all the way up to 87, 88. Um, and then we'd see a pretty substantial correction if that was a wave five. So there's been a lot of talks about rates and value outperformance. We've definitely seen oil do quite well, right? So I think in the short term that we could see the financials do well. Here is MetLife. MetLife has given a little bit of evidence quietly to market bulls. It formed a wave one and a wave two, went on a big wave three, and then ended a wave four at exactly the 38.2% retracement. I believe from this low, we went on a wave one and a wave two. Then we broke above the wave one high and we broke above the wave three high. So I believe a large degree wave five is in progress. On the smaller degree, this is a wave one and a wave two. So I believe MetLife is going to 74 for wave three before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. All in all ways, one, two, three, four, and five can take Met all the way up to 74 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher up to 80, right? So if Met's going to 80, right? Citibank's going to 87, most likely the stock market isn't gonna crash during that time. Here are the home builders XHB, a very interesting chart because this is a classic perfect bull flag. It's also a very nice wave count. It's a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five. On the larger degree, I believe this is a large wave one and a large wave two. This is a huge wave three and a wave four that ended right around the 23.6% retracement. So this was a shallow wave four correction. I believe from this low, we formed a wave one and a wave two ending between the 61.8 and 78.6% retracement. So if we're above 67, that's pretty tight, but that's really a nice level right now. If XHB is above 67, then I expect we're then a large degree wave five. Ultimately, the wave five target can take XHB all the way up to 126, right? So that would be um, uh, huge implications for inflation, a lot of inflation vehicles. And also probably we shouldn't be betting against equities if we could see uh, that the home builders go up substantially higher. I think this is kind of also in that theme of a lot of sectors, especially value sectors that consolidated uh, for most of 2021 could do quite well. This is a wave one and a wave two at the 61.8 and 78.6% retracement. So the length of wave one places the wave too low, I think XHB up to 90 before a shallow wave four and a wave five, all in all waves one, two, three, four, and five. And like XHB up to 104, I think realistically we'll go much further than that. We could go all the way to the length of wave three, place of the wave four low, all the way to 126. So if we're above 67, the next target is 90 before a shallow wave four and a wave five up to 104. If we go past 104, we can go all the way to 126 to complete this kind of textbook bull flag, this uh, wave five that would be the length of wave three place of the wave four low so above 67 i think we're going to about 90 then 104 then even 126 later in the year here is kbh home builders very uh cool chart we saw that home depot and lowe's had broken above this low so for a while i've been looking for kbh to follow it had a huge weekly candle and then reversed a lot of those gains so i think that this is a little supplement to the xhb chart 
Now, this is a wave one and a wave two from this low. So I believe KBH Home Builders forms another wave one and another wave two. So if we're above 35, the length of wave one places the wave two low, can take KBH all the way to 60 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. I think this gives better downside levels than anything we see on XHB. But a very tight stop would be 35. I think that's actually a nice stop. The widest invalidation would be 30. And if we're above these levels, I suspect this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, wave 1, and an ABC correction ending a wave 2 near the 61.8% retracement. So the length of wave 1 placed the wave too low. And take XHB up to 60 before a shallow wave 4 and a wave 5 higher. This whole rally is from November to May, right? So it's about six months, six months, five months from now. We can see the home builders do quite well. I want to see KBH above 35. It can be heading to 60 before a shallow wave 4 and a wave 5 higher. So that's KBH home builders. Here is Silver and SILJ. One very interesting theme that we've seen this week. Uh, was that a lot of silver miners and a lot of silver related stocks have done quite well and a lot of people are going to roll their eyes right because their uncle's been talking about silver for the past 10 years and a lot of silver bulls have been talking about silver uh, a lot for the past year and a half so why might it be quote unquote different this time well, it might be different this time for the same reason that oil recently was different this time so these pictures are of stocks that have zero percent implied volatility rank and percentile there are also stocks that are in the top 200 options open interest and volume so this is completely free at ivolatility.com and i've kind of shown throughout the course of my channel why paying attention to stocks that have very low implied volatility and very high liquidity is important to kind of filter out um, what i would call choppiness right so if you're looking at stocks that have very cheap options and high liquidity then that means that institutions are hedging for a large move now yes that move could be to the downside um but it could also be as we see a lot of times to the upside and what we saw recently this is from last thursday that slv had zero percent implied volatility ranking percentile and it was in the top 200 options volume and open interest i would also point out that hut mining and the bitcoin etf have been seeing a lot of open interest and cheap options as well but mostly slv lots of option history and it's extremely liquid right now so we've seen kind of recently uh, that a lot of stocks on the screen are do quite well this picture since we just talked about the banks is from november 15th we see all these banks we see micron on the screener in the low 80s right so i had someone come out and they said that they were going to short micron uh, around 82 right because because I, they just wanted to do the opposite of me and what they didn't realize was that i pulled micron out of a screener that showed it had the top 200 um options volume and open interest right so this person shorted micron in the low 80s and then micron exploded it followed qualcomm and then taiwan semis followed so this is why uh, these screeners can be very important. Most recently, um, these screeners were very helpful in letting me know that the oil stocks were getting ready for a huge move. We saw XLE, we saw a lot of oil names on the screener, but on you know really the last few days of December, December 29th, we saw Occidental Petroleum and we saw British Petroleum uh, with a lot of open interest a lot of options volume while options were very cheap so that signaled that the institutions were buying lots of options they were hedging for a large move the wave theory suggested the move would be to the upside so that's kind of why quote unquote it could be different this time for silver and we're starting to see a little bit of a change in pace for slv this could be a wave one slash wave a or a wave two slash wave b so this is how i count the bull flag and elliott wave i believe this is the proper way to count the bull flag and elliott wave is that essentially this is either a wave one or a wave a this is a wave two or a wave b so if at any point in the future slv is above 28 then i would believe that slv is incomplete whether or not someone says this is a wave a and a wave b or a wave one and a wave two the minimum expectation is that the length of wave three or the length of wave c would be the length of this rally placed at this low so this is that textbook classical bull flag so if we're above 17.40 i believe the length of wave one places the wave too low in the bigger picture especially with a lot of oomph from the options right now that we could see a big move in silver and obviously yes the silver miners the gold miners were probably doing quite well during that time that we could take slv all the way to 36. now this whole rally is it's less than a year that we could see a pretty substantial move in slv if this is a wave three that's begun it's going to be pretty dramatic and i'm very curious to see how long it's going to take for slv to go break above this high because then this would be a textbook 
either wave one or wave A, a wave two or wave B. So the minimum target would be the classic bull flag that takes SLD all the way to 36. And it's got a lot of options volume a lot of options open interest supporting the idea that there could be a large move happening and it could be a lot quicker than we're used to we look at SILJ right now. This is the junior silver miners. And it's also supporting the idea that we could go from very boring to very exciting very quickly. I believe this is a wave one and an ABC wave two for SILJ. So if I take the beginning of wave one with an Andrews pitchfork connected with the wave one high and the wave two low, we have a very pretty pitchfork and we're very close to the lower bound of the pitchfork. So what normally happens if it is a wave one and a wave two is that we go from the lower bound of the pitchfork to the meeting of the pitchfork. And on the kind of smaller degree, if this is a wave one and an ABC wave two, it's ending at the 50 to 61.8% retracement. So I think 10 would be a little tight, but I like 10 as a level to stay above. And if we are, then SILJ can go the length of wave one place at the wave too low. We're seeing a lot of alpha recently from silver. That could be a heads up that, hey, the move that the uh, options market is anticipating is to the upside. That could take SILJ all the way up to 25, all the way to the median of this Andrews pitchfork. So very interested in SILJ, uh, King Cross Silver, KGC, Ken, Ken Ross Silver or Ken Ross Gold is a very pretty chart. I just want to show it as kind of evidence of why we might be in a bullish impulse for the metals. This is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and a wave two ending for KGC. I believe this is another wave one and an ABC correction ending wave two between the 61.8 to 78.6% retracement. So I think that KGC is an important chart that I want to include because it really shows what this clear impulse looks like. One, two, three, four, five, wave one and wave two. Huge wave one, ABC correction wave two, ending between the 61.8 and 78.6% retracement. So if we're above the 78.6% fib of 4.34, this one hasn't really gone up too much. I could see it playing a uh, follow the leader, holding above 4.34, and going significantly higher so kgc is kind of nice evidence kind of leading on to that we'll talk about copper copper miners and platinum so what happens if the metals go down in the short term i think that the uh the etf cper could show what might occur that this is a huge wave one so if we saw the metals go down i would be looking at cper this is the copper etf that this is an a b c correction that could be any so if if we saw the metals take another leg lower, I would look for the length of wave A, place of the wave B high to where to be where CPER, the copper ETF, ends wave C. Then the length of this rally, place of this low, could take the copper ETF all the way up to 40. So more emblematic of not only kind of a rally in the metals, but a rally in the inflation sector that we've called weak losers for a long time. And if we see right now that the 38.2% retracement is 23, that's a nice level to stay above. This could be a wave one and a wave two. The length of wave one place of the wave too low could take CPR all the way to 40. So yes, I would not bet on this rally to the downside. And if we got above this wave one high, then I would not be looking for uh, another leg to the downside. I'd be looking for uh, this wave two to already be in, and we're going to go on a wave three higher. So I wanted to include CPER if the metals took another leg lower, because then the length of wave A placed the wave B high would be a great place um, for a, an important low to be put in before a rally to 40. So that CPER, it lines up with the copper miners ETF, COPX. So very kind of similar to copper is that we could be taking another leg higher. In the more, most conservative view, I believe that COPX, the copper miners ETF, forms a wave one in an ABC wave two, then goes on this big wave three and consolidates into wave four. Wave four got very close to retesting the wave one high. So if we're above 28, a little tighter, since this is a low beta stock, would be 32. If we're above 28 to 32, then I believe that a wave four has been put in. And COPX will at least go the length of wave one, place of the wave four low. That could take COPX all the way to 53. Now, if COPX goes past 53, if it goes past 53, then most likely wave five will not be the length of wave one. It'll be the length of wave three, place of the wave four low. And then we're talking about an ETF full of copper miners going from about 40 to 70, nearly doubling for what would then be uh, this wave five. But the kind of the stage is set right now that all these boring losers in the precious metals and 
you know, other sectors, they could be the only thing giving money to bulls in the future. So that's just something to think about. COPX, CPER, and silver, uh, they might show the importance of diversification later in the year if they're not already. So here is the platinum ETF PPLT. This is a huge wave one and an ABC wave two, any between the 50 to 61.8% retracement. We're starting to kind of turn up right here what I could see is that we've already put in wave two. If we're above the 61.8% retracement of 80, the length of wave one placed at the wave two low can take the platinum ETF up to 151. That would be pretty substantial, not just for the precious metals, but once again, for a lot of inflation vehicles. So this is a huge wave one. This entire rally is from 316 to 215 on the weekly chart. And I think one thing that's a little interesting one thing that's a little interesting is that a lot of the growth charts like arc for example and most of the arc etfs form these exact same lows and highs so a lot of you guys have pointed out the relationship between inflation and growth stocks what i think is interesting is that this low from about march 16th to this high in february uh mid-february for platinum is nearly the exact same dates that most of the growth etfs make together before a wave two low is put in and hopefully a wave three higher we've already seen a couple one by one a lot of stocks in the growth sector break above this wave one high so i'm not going to use that as evidence for platinum but i do believe that we've, we're going to see that the losers of 2021 are the leaders in 2022 especially in the second half of the year um, but i'm not going to wait for that i believe this is a wave one and a wave two if we're above 80 pplt can go to 151 for a minimum wave three target before shallow wave four and a wave five higher so here are the emerging markets let's talk about the short-term view of the emerging markets so remember i count the classical bull flag essentially like this the first leg of the bull flag is either a wave one or a wave a we're in a kind of sideways channel so one of the elliott wave principles is that corrective waves are uh, contained within parallel channels so i believe that this is either a wave one or a wave a and a wave two or a wave b ending at the 38.2 percent retracement so a little tight a little tight would be 44 above the 50 percent retracement but what i really want to see and why i really want to include this is that if we had a clean break of this clear downtrend right let's say we, we had a four or five percent up candle we clearly broke and closed through this downtrend a lot of wave theorists would use that as evidence that this corrective structure is in ended this entire year of consolidation is over and we're within either wave three or wave c so if this is a wave a or a wave b or if it's a wave one and a wave two the length of this rally placed at this low is the wave three or the wave c minimum target that could take emerging markets to 75. so a lot of you guys are saying puppy trades i don't care about emerging markets well if someone hypothetically invests in foreign stocks, right, then they should really care about emerging markets because uh, as I'm about to show, there's a lot of overlap between EEM and the Chinese stocks. And what we're kind of seeing right now, I think Taiwan Semi's kind of kicked this off, is that the foreign stocks, the Asian market is starting to do a little well, very quietly. I don't think it's going to be as quiet anymore. But the emerging markets, I believe, are a wave one or a wave A, a wave two and a wave B. If we're above 44, especially if we go break this downtrend line, wave three or wave C is in progress all the way up to 75. And that could happen uh, a lot quicker than people think. This whole rally, right? What we just talked about with platinum, mid-March to mid-February, 11 months. Okay, those are the exact same dates that pplt formed i'm not kind of correlating the two but they did move together and they did consolidate together so they we could see some growth stocks and some metals do well together i think we'll, we'll especially see some foreign stocks do quite well and i believe taiwan semis breaking above that february high is kind of the first big leading indicator that we've gotten this is a wave one or a wave a a wave two or a wave b so wave three or wave c can take eem up to 75. now what i also want to show is this bigger degree count this bigger degree count because what we're about to see is that this chart is nearly identical nearly identical to fxi which we're about to go over the chinese large cap stocks and you'll see what i'm talking about in a second but just this entire rally we put in a very important high in about october of 2007 we have the 2008 financial crisis then we form a one two one two elliott wave nest now if i move the chart like this it would be identical to what fxi looks like right now remember fxi chinese large cap etf we're about to go over 
If I move the chart like this, we can't tell the difference between EEM and FXI. But if I move it over, we see possibly a leading indicator that FXI is going to go break the 2007 high. So these charts are nearly identical. What I'm trying to show is that EEM could be a leading indicator that FXI is going to go break above this October 2007 high. If you look at FXI right now, we'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Nearly identical charts, right? Uncanny charts, right? 2007 high, wave one, devastating wave two, and then kind of a nest form, a one, two, one, two, LA wave nest. The question right now, the million dollar question, will FXI ever break the 2007 high? I believe the market is giving a leading indicator through emerging markets that it will. And I think from this low, this is a wave one and a wave two. So a nice stop right now is this low of about 32, 33. If we're above 33.10, which I'll go adjust on my fibs, if we're above 33.10, and then what we could see is that FXI goes on a wave three higher. So that wave three on the smaller degree, which we'll look at in a second, could be um, all the way up to 67. So that high is 54, that low is 33. So if we look in the short term view, what I could see is that this is a one, two, three, four, five wave one for FXI. And this is an ABC correction ending a wave two. What we could see is a pretty clear trend reversal that takes FXI in the bigger picture, possibly even in 2022, above this high from February of 2021. This is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and an ABC correction wave two. A lot of wave theories are going to say puppy trades. Why is wave three shorter than wave one? What this could be is a little bit of a what's called a leading diagonal. An Elliott wave theory, a leading diagonal is just a fancy way of saying that a rising wedge forms. And what most people will see is that this is a, a bearish rising wedge. And in the short term, that's correct because it's a huge wave one and then there's a kick out wave two. What it also is, is a huge indication that this is a sector that's being accumulated very aggressively. This is the one, two, three, four, five wave one leading diagonal. This is the ABC wave two kick out wave. Now we're seeing right on cue with the new year, we have seen a lot of these Chinese stocks turn up and slowly, very quietly outperform the indices. So if we just kind of zoom in on the bigger picture, what we could see is that this is a huge wave one and wave two and another wave one and another wave two. Ultimately, if this is a wave one and a wave two that holds, we will not break below 33 and FXI will go all the way to 67 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. Ultimately, this ETF full of Chinese stocks could go break this 2007 high way up here of about 73 and i believe emerging markets are a leading indicator that it will here is ashr it's a very similar uh, idea but it's a little different looking chart it's chinese uh, stocks chinese large caps i believe this is uh, a wave one and an abc wave two i believe this is a huge wave three and a wave four that is ending between the 38.2 and 50 percent retracement so very tight would be 35 i think this wave b high of about 30.90 would be a little wider. What I think is going to occur, we'll hold above 35, we'll certainly hold above 30.90, and we're going to go on a wave five higher. We're going to see ASHR, an ETF full of Chinese stocks, go break this February 15th high, and it could do exactly what Taiwan semi semiconductors just did, form a huge base, the left side of the base, the right side of the base, then all of a sudden there's a new year, there's a new quarter, we see ASHR go break this wave three high, go break this February 15th high and continue to build on what Taiwan Simis has done, give a leading indicator that foreign stocks are gonna do quite well. So this whole rally is from 316 to 215 on the weekly chart. So if that's all replicated, the length of wave three, place of the wave four low, if we I have already put in wave four, can take ASHR up to 58. This is an ETF full of Chinese stocks. They could do quite well. So here's NTES just to kind of build on that theme. This is kind of looking good for the Chinese stocks. We saw a little bit of outperformance today, and we've seen a little bit of outperformance recently, kind of similar to the precious metals where it's very quiet, and then all of a sudden it's not so quiet. I think this is a wave one and a wave two for NTES, net ease, and then another one, two, three, four, five, wave one, and a wave two ending between the 61.8 and 78.6% retracement. So if we're above 74 to 77, I believe net ease will go the entire length of wave one, place at the wave two low, that could take net ease up to 175. 
similar to ashr uh, breaking the february high i could see that net ease is above the february high before most of the other chinese stocks and i could see it being a huge leading indicator that gets ignored uh, by most of the you know kind of community right most of the crowd is going to ignore that net ease is above 134 right they're still going to be bearish alibaba and they're still going to you know be shorting baidu and all these chinese stocks but they're not going to realize that net ease has given a leading indicator that the correction in Chinese stocks is over. So I believe this is a one, two, three, four, five, wave one, and an ABC wave two, the length of wave one places the wave too low, ultimately can take net ease to 175 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. But what's most important is that net ease can hold above 74 to 77, and it could be above 134 very quickly and be a huge leading indicator that we're gonna see a lot of dominance in stocks in the asian market kind of similar to what yes taiwan semis just did breaking above the february 15th high so the market is always giving clues if we look at alibaba right now very quietly very quietly this stock has been outperforming for the past couple of weeks and it's kind of like oil where first it's kind of quiet you're like oh well it's oil and then all of a sudden it's kind of hard to to not look at so this is a one, two, three, four, five, in my opinion, wave one for Alibaba. Now an ABC correction, wave two, ending at the 78.6% retracement. So I got into Alibaba in the 160s um, because I wanted to hold it uh, forever, right? And I wasn't going to let the idea that we'd have an earnings pop and Alibaba would, would run away. I wasn't willing to risk that. So to me, getting exposure to Alibaba was more important than getting called a retail bag holder on the internet. And I think it's going to be worth it. This is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and an ABC wave two at the 78.6% retracement. So I'm going to hold Alibaba forever, uh, or at least until it goes all the way to 500. I think in the smaller degree, this is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and an ABC wave two ending at the 78.6% retracement. So in the bigger picture, the length of this rally placed at this low can take Alibaba all the way to 372 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. One thing that I'm looking for is will net ease break above that February high. I think the fact that Taiwan semis has already broken the February high, I think very soon we'll see emerging markets break out. And I think that we're going to see um, a lot of stocks in the Asian market give evidence that we're rotating into this sector especially when we look at the idea that in the second half of midterm years american equities can underperform so if money's flowing out of american equities it could be flowing into uh, chinese stocks and japanese stocks as well so we're at the 70.6 retracement i'm gonna hold alibaba and i take smaller business sizes in growth stocks than i do value stocks but alibaba actually was kind of a value stock here's socl socl very cool chart very cool chart it holds a lot of names that have gotten hit for the past year but what we, what we talked about this entire video the idea that very slowly one by one we could see the february 15th high on the weekly chart get broken i believe that this is a wave one and a wave two for socl this is an etf full of social media stocks like Baidu, NetEase, and Twitter, I believe this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. We're at the 50 to 61 binary percent retracement. So 45 is a little tight. I think this wave one high of 39 is a nice level as well. I think 43 is a nice stop too, but really 45 to 39, I wanna see SOCL hold above that level. A lot of times in Elliott Wave Theory, if there's a clear wave one, then the wave one retest in the future can be a huge buy, regardless of what kind of the broader wave count is. And I believe that this is a, a big piece of evidence. It's really hard to, in my opinion, dispute from an LA wave perspective that this is not an impulse, right? This is pretty clearly an impulse in my opinion. There's a few reasons that I say that. One is that if we take the Fibonacci extensions, we can see that we go well past the 161.8% extension for this rally. So that's a kind of a big piece of evidence. Another piece of evidence is that on the monthly chart and the weekly chart, we make a new high on the relative strength index. So that can help confirm from an LA wave perspective that this is not a wave five that has ended. That means that the impulse is still incomplete. And I believe it is. I believe this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. And I believe SOCL could be the next stock and the next group of stocks that goes and breaks that February high. And this holds a lot of Chinese stocks. It also holds a lot of growth stocks. What I could see is that from Mar March 16th to February 15th, right? The exact same dates. They're the exact same dates, right? So we've already seen Taiwan semis break above the February 15th high on the weekly chart. 
I believe SOCL is a wave one and a wave two will hold above very aggressively 45. I think 43 to 39 is more realistic. The length of wave one places the wave too low says this could be a big rally that occurs in the growth sector all the way up to 103. And what I'm very interested in, especially after we've had an insane rally in equities, and we could be looking at a kind of maybe even what I would call a bear market in the second half of the year after a melt-up, in my opinion, is that stocks that underperformed the uh, indices very heavily in 2021 are the only things giving money to the long side in 2022. So that's just something that I'm thinking about. Here is PSJ. PSJ is a software ETF very similar to SOCL, and it's a very, very pretty count. Wave one, wave two, huge wave one, and an ABC correction that looks like it's ending a wave two. So the ABC correction, I believe if we take the length of wave A and we place it at the wave B high, we're getting close to now what is called the equal legs target. So I was looking for the 50% retracement, which I believe was 129 to not get broken. But where we are now is that this could be a huge wave one and a wave two that is ending and then another wave one and another wave two. And what are these dates? Wow, from 316 to 215. They're the same date. And the more and more stocks in the growth sector that we see break above the February 15th high, the more we're kind of going to have a leading indicator that we should look for stocks and ETFs that haven't. And what we see now is that this is a wave one and a wave two between the 61.8 and 78.6% retracement. If we're above 95, the 78.6% FIB, an entire ETF full of software stocks can go the length of wave one, place it the wave too low, and PSJ can go to a minimum wave three target of 226 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. So we're talking about potentially an entire ETF full of software stocks doubling. And they're gonna say it's the prettiest base breakout in the world when it's above 185. I believe we're between the 61.8 and 78.6% retracement of what is a clear impulse of structure. I believe we will hold above 95 and go head towards this wave one high of 187 ultimately going all the way to the 220s for a minimum wave three target here is roku we saw streaming stocks get hit pretty hard uh, in after hours i believe that was netflix earnings that triggered that so roku is a wave one in abc wave two one thing that i would say might be good for roku is that it is trading with disney and it is trading with netflix so if it is trading with the streaming stocks while netflix hasn't done well Disney looks like it could do quite well, and I think Netflix is eventually going to recover. But Roku has been trading with the streaming stocks, and I believe that's a good thing because the setup in Disney, even if it goes lower, is still very uh, clear in the longer-term picture that Disney is going to do very well. I believe ultimately Netflix will recover as well. I think Roku is a 5% holding of PSJ. It's a nearly identical chart. This is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and an ABC wave two. So I think what the bulls have best going in their favor is that this is a clear impulsive structure. I know because I said Roku could be the stock of the summer in this range. So I was wrong that Roku would hold this low of 272. But the good news is that that means that this was not a wave five that occurred. I was looking for this to be a, a wimpy wave five. I believe what this is is a one, two, three, four, five, a huge wave one. And this is an ABC wave two. So we're at the 61.8% retracement. That means that we can't call this a wave three and a wave four. We're not looking for a wimpy wave five higher. We're looking for a huge wave two to end before a big wave three. And the length of this entire rally, the length of this entire rally can be replicated in time and price. And that could take Roku to the 600s. Now, usually in Elliott Wave Theory, Wave 3 is stronger and faster than the length of Wave 1 placed at the Wave 2 low. But just right then and there, what I would even call a minimum Wave 3 target in the future is substantially higher than the current price. So I want to see the 78.6% retracement of this entire rally hold, which is 125. Realistically, if Roku did break above this low, it is why I take personally smaller position sizes in growth stocks because i know that they are going to make retail traders feel like idiots okay anyone who is not willing to get called a bag holder on the internet will simply never uh, buy growth stocks ever right that's just kind of how it works the beta is too high it's nearly impossible to buy a growth stock put a 10 percent trailing stop and hold it forever so I take smaller position sizes in growth to compensate for the higher beta. And what we can see right now in Roku is that that 
is going to play out. The length of wave one places the wave too low says that a minimum target, a minimum target in the future is 620 over three times higher, I believe, than the current price. Before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. So if we're above 125, the risk reward is certainly there. Realistically, this is an ABC correction. I don't think Roku will go too much deeper than the length of wave A places the wave B high before turning around for wave C and going wave one, wave two, wave three to the upside. So PSJ holding above 95. We'll talk about the arc setups as well. Very similar to Roku holding above 125. I'll be trading the ETFs together. One reason that I really like focusing on ETFs is because they have a lower beta. So it's harder for kind of some of these wider stop levels to get hit. So PSJ will be a very important chart for Roku. A lot of important charts are going to come from ARC, ARC F, and ARC W. This to me just is kind of emblematic of what opportunity could be presented, right? This is this is an ETF that mostly holds Square Cash and PayPal, and it holds a few other you know e-commerce stocks. But realistically, ARC F is going to be doing what Square Cash and PayPal are doing. And what ARC F is saying is that this is a wave one in an ABC wave two at the 61.8% retracement. Okay, I didn't invent the golden ratio, and this wave one high is 27. It is almost perfectly synced up with the 78.6% retracement of 27. So if we're above 27, it's a nice level to stay above in this entire rally from guess when 316 to 215. An 11 month rally can be replicated. The length of wave one placed the wave too low says arc F in the bigger picture can go to 80 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. My suspicion is that if arc F has a substantial rally and if somehow, some way it breaks above this high in the second half of the year that it is going to be doing so while the indices are getting hammered so i think what we could see is a huge shift in leadership especially in the second half of the year but we're already seeing it in the first half of the year we call it oil stocks weak losers we call chinese stocks weak losers we call silver and silver miners weak losers for the past three weeks those sectors are the only things that have been giving money uh, to the long side here is ONLN, very similar to RKF, nearly identical, holds a lot of Alibaba, holds a lot of Amazon. What I do believe is happening is that we are seeing the e-commerce stocks and the e-cash stocks capitulate a lot of retail traders who were correct that these stocks were going to, quote unquote, take over the world. I think they were right. What they were wrong about was that these were going to be the next Amazon and the next MasterCard but that they were gonna be easier than Amazon. They were gonna be easier than MasterCard. They were gonna be easier than Netflix. No, they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be just as difficult. And what we've seen right now, these could be stocks in the e-commerce sector and in the e-cash sector that may have analogs to MasterCard in 2008, maybe even Amazon in 2008. Uh, but like those analogs, they're gonna make retail traders feel very dumb. You know, everyone's gonna say retail got scammed. I think this is a wave one and a wave two for O and L N. We have a lot of evidence from the Chinese stocks, a lot of evidence, I believe, from that massive weekly bull flag that's forming on Amazon that this is a huge wave one and an ABC wave two, right? And what are the dates for this? Oh, it's from 3.9. Is it from 3.9? Yep, 3.16 to 2.15 on the weekly chart, right? They're the exact same dates. And I think one by one, Taiwan semis may have been first. We're going to see a lot of stocks break above the 2.15 high. This is a wave one and the ABC wave two at the 61.8% retracement. So I believe O and LN will hold above 42, which lines up very closely with this wave one high of about 41. And it will go the length of wave one, place it way too low. So what we're seeing is some pretty nice opportunities in ETFs, right? Exchange traded funds. That means that their top holdings are going to do quite well. What I can see for a lot of these is that this is the left side of the base. All of a sudden, we're not so bearish growth. Right? The alpha is in the growth sector. The alpha is in the precious metals. The alpha is in the 2021 weak losers. And it's going to be the prettiest base breakout when we're in the 90s for a lot of these names. Okay, I believe this is a wave one and a wave two. ONLN will hold above 42. Start heading into the hundreds in the bigger picture. So that's ONLN. Here is Square. Square Cash, Block. They changed the names, but the chart is very pretty. And a lot of people, they thought Square Cash and PayPal were the next big thing. They were going to take over the world. I think they were right. And I think the one thing that Square Cash has going for it is that this is a pretty clear wave one and a wave two. And I think this is a pretty clear impulsive structure as well. This is most likely, in my opinion, a wave one and a wave two ending at the 61.8% retracement. 
So I didn't invent the golden ratio. I think a little tighter stop than where we are currently would be 101. The widest stop would be the 78.6% retracement of 87. Uh, Square Cash, very similar to PSJ, to ONLN, to ARC F. I want to see a lot of those setups play out. But I believe this could be a wave one and a wave two. The length of wave one places the wave too low. Says we'll hold up 87 to 101 and go all the way in the bigger picture into the 300s, the upper 300s. But really, even just breaking this wave one high is over 100% return. And the classical traders, they're going to say, wait until it's up here, right? Because you could get called a retail bag holder if you buy here or if you buy here or if you buy here. But all of those levels are a lot slower than up here. And I think one thing about being a growth investor for me is what size of a dip are you taking advantage of? And that's a pretty big one right here where this is a huge wave one and an ABC wave two at the 61.8% retracement. The length of wave one places the wave too low says we don't even really need to talk about the minimum wave three target. Square cash just getting to 289 is over 100% return from the current levels. And that would be a minimum wave three target. So to me, growth investing, it's all about smaller position sizes. It's also kind of about having thick skin, okay? It's not for people who are afraid of being called wrong on the internet. Uh, I don't really care about being an Alibaba bag holder. I care that most people use Amazon products, Netflix products, Google products, and Apple products for 10 years, but very few of them ever went out and bought the stocks. I think that we know why. It's because they're afraid of being called bag holders on the internet, okay? I'm not. I got bigger issues than that. Here is a wave one and a wave two, a huge wave one, and an ABC correction ending wave two for IPO. So IPO, I believe, is at the length of wave A, place of the wave B high, it's exactly where wave C is ending, okay? We're at the 50% retracement and the 61.8% retracement of an impulse. So what happens if a bunch of IPO stocks go and break this, surprise, surprise, 215 high on the weekly chart, right? What happens then? That means that a lot of growth stocks and kind of sadly, a lot of stocks that retail traders proclaimed as the next big thing are going to have explosive breakouts if we see IPO in the 70s. And the theme is, once again, the losers of 2021 are going to be the only things giving money at some point in 2022. We're seeing that with silver. We're seeing that with oil. We're seeing that very slowly with Chinese stocks. I think we could see on a much bigger picture in the growth sector where this is all a huge wave one and an ABC wave two. I like the 61.8% retracement of 42 for an ETF full of IPO stocks that might be a little tight, but that also kind of lines up with the length of wave A, place the wave B high, being where the wave C ended. So I mostly care about IPO for Pounder because Pounder doesn't really have clear levels to trade against. So if IPO is above 42, that's the 61.8% retracement. The length of wave one places the wave too low can take it on a wave three above 77 all the way to 103. So that could happen. This is from 316 to 215. So once we know that wave two is in, the time target for wave three is at least the length of wave one in time and price. And that could take an ETF full of IPO stocks, right? Recent IPO stocks, all these weak losers to new highs, they would be doing quite well. We can see that the ETF itself could double. Here's Unity Software, here's Palantir. We'll talk about XPEV2 in this ETF. I believe that we look at the charts of Lucid Motors, we look at the charts of IPO, XPEV, and Pounder. A lot of people are gonna say puppy trades. Why are we talking about XPEV and Pounder? Why are we talking about Unity Software? and Pounder, it's because they're all in the recent IPO ETF. And Unity Software, I believe, is acting as a huge leading indicator that not only many IPO stocks, but software IPO stocks are gonna go on another thrust higher. I believe this is, this is a wave one and an ABC wave two, and this is another wave one and another wave two. I believe IPO will hold above 104 and go the length of this wave one, place of this wave too low, and go all the way to 242. So the 78.6% retracement is usually a little tight um, for a high beta stock, but right now I wanna see 104 not get broken. The length of wave one places the wave too low, says the next time Unity Software goes on a thrust higher, that's gonna take the laggards in the software sector, particularly the recent IPO software sector, like Fastly, like Pounder, like even Roku, I would add in that group, uh, to new highs with it. So if we look at Lucid Motors, here is kind of, this is what I was expecting for Pounder. What I was expecting from, for Pounder was from the May low, we we're gonna form a wave one and a wave two and begin this impulse. So Unity Software did that. Lucid Motors did not. I think Pounder Bulls, they need to look at the Lucid Motors chart a lot. 
This is why I take half position size and growth than I do value. And really they should be smaller than that because the beta is substantially higher. But if we look at Lucid Motors, what we could see is what happens to Pounder in the future. I believe this is a wave one. And then what, what do we have? We have this May low and they make everyone feel stupid. They make everyone feel like huge idiots for buying Lucid Motors before an explosion. And I believe that this explosion was a wave one and a wave two. The length of wave one places the wave two low, says Lucid Motors should hold above 31 and go the length of wave one places the wave two low to new highs. If we look at Lucid Motors, if we look at XPEV, if we look at Lee, there's a lot of stocks in the EV sector and in the recent IPO software sector that look ready to go challenge this wave one high this 215 wave one high anyway. So if we're above 31, the, the length of wave one places the wave too low can take Lucid Motors substantially higher, most importantly to a new high. So 75 would be the equal legs target. I wanted to talk about Pounder now because I think it could be, it could be a leading indicator of what, or Lucid Motors could be a leading indicator of what's gonna happen to Pounder. Now, there has to be risk management levels, but I will say this again, I take half position sizes in growth than I do value to compensate for the beta because I know this is going to happen. So we are below 15. So to be fair, the stop level has been hit. I still think that shorting Pounder is a very bad idea. And I think what we could see is the Lucid Motors chart is an analog for what Pounder is about to do. I saw someone say when I posted about Pounder right here, they said Pounder is going to 15 for an ABC correction to end. So I'm very curious to know if that person is now saying, hey, this is wave two, we're getting ready to fly. A lot of times Elliott Wave Theory is still getting the trap of saying, oh, there's another low, there's another low, there's another low. And even if they predict the other low, they never, they never buy it. They'll never come out and say, oh, this is it, right? For me, I'm not worried about getting called a bag holder on the internet. I know that they're gonna make Palantir difficult and we can kind of see why. This is a stock that's formed multiple year partnerships with the government. We talk about Unity Software, we talk about Fastly, we talk about Roku having monster setups. And if any of those play out, Pounder's probably gonna be doing well. So I think the IPO chart holding above 42 is very important. We have gone below 15. So I manage a risk with growth stocks with position sizes. The length of wave one, place of the wave too low, says in the future, Pounder can go above 45. That is substantially higher, 300% higher than the current levels. But that wouldn't even be the biggest deal. The biggest deal would be that we've confirmed this is an IPO base. We've confirmed that institutions have been accumulating the crap out of Pounder during this entire IPO. And I believe this is a selling climax. Now, what's the fear with Pounder? Well, the fear with Pounder is kind of the fear with every stock that it just kind of goes below eight. So we have gone below 15. That was the stop level. If there was a safer way to play Pounder, it would be to wait for an impulse structure to form for a wave one before a wave two and a wave three higher, right? So then this would be a wave one and a wave two. We could trade against the wave one low and go higher, okay? So I'll be updating Pounder. If we form a wave one and a wave two, then there would be a wave one low to trade against in the future. So that's Pounder. I think the IPO chart is very important for the downside levels. Here is XPEV. I believe this is a wave one and an ABC wave two, and it's in the IPO ETF. Another wave one and another wave two, and yes, another wave one and another wave two. So if we're above this low of 33, then I believe that XPEV is within a huge wave three. On the smaller degree, this is a wave one and a wave two. So the, the small wave three target would be 70 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher then that would mean XPEV and Lee are both above the IPO high. Both of these big components of the IPO ETF will have confirmed that this was all institutional accumulation. And when a stock has recently IPO'd, especially in the past three to five years, the risk reward ratio is dramatically higher because if XPEV is above this high, then it's not gonna be, yay, we got to 74. It's gonna be, we just confirmed that the big boys have been loading up XPEV this entire time. So I bought XPEV at 29. I got called a retail bag holder for three months. You know, and, and the jury's still out if, you know, I'm a, a winner for XPEV. But for me, volatility in growth stocks is to be expected. It is the price that investors pay for upside capital gains. They're gonna scare out the retail traders and anyone who's worried about being called a bag holder on the internet, they're just not gonna, they're not gonna hold any of these. So here is QCLN. I have talked about a lot of clean energy ETFs. 
I've talked about TAN, and I've talked about ICLN. For this video, I'm going to talk about QCLN because it shows the worst case scenario if we break below 53. Now, it also shows, in my opinion, uh, what could happen if we don't break below 53. So let me make sure my fibs are correct. 53, okay. So this is a huge wave one and wave two for QCLN, in my opinion. And this is a big, conservatively, this is a big wave three and a wave four that is ending between the 38.2 and 50% retracement. So if we're above this low of 53, then I believe this is a wave one and a wave two. QCLN can go all the way up to a wave three target, which is the 161.8% extension of wave one before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. So the 161.8% extension of wave one is all the way up around 102, 103. So if we're above 53, then this is a wave one, a wave two, and a wave three to the hundreds is next. The reason that I wanted to show QCLN in this video instead of ICLN and instead of TAN is because it helps to show what the worst case scenario could be a worst case scenario that I would not personally be betting on. And that is that this is an ABC correction. The length of wave A placed with wave B high could take QCLN below the psychological level of 50. Then that would end, in my opinion, another wave one and another wave two. And we'd have a monster, monster nest, essentially. So a one, two, one, two, LA wave nest. The reason I wanted to show QCLN is if it breaks below 53, it shows that the worst case scenario for clean energy still isn't that bad. So I'll show kind of supplementary charts with Enphase Energy and Tesla for QCLN, both huge holdings of this ETF. But what I want to show is that even if we went below this low and we got to about 49, 48, it would still be, in my opinion, a wave one and an ABC correction ending a wave two before an explosive move. So I would not be betting on a move below 53. The reason I wanted to show QCLN is if it does go below 53, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Now, if it doesn't go below 53, then it's already within an impulsive structure. And that would mean uh, that we're within a wave three right now on the smaller degree, or we're about to begin a wave three on the smaller degree. If we hold above 53, then this is a wave one and a wave two. We're gonna go on a wave three up to 102, 103 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. So I wouldn't be betting against clean energy. I wouldn't be betting on a move below 50. What I'm trying to show with QCLN is even if it did happen, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It would certainly feel like it though. Here is Tesla to kind of supplement that chart. This is a huge, I go over this, this chart a lot. So let's just focus on what could happen from this low. What I believe is going to happen from this low is that this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a huge wave three and a wave four that is already ended. So a lot of wave theories, they're going to get in the trap of, oh, there's another low before there's another high. There's another low before there's another high and then Tesla's gone. Okay. I believe what's most likely is that this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a wave three and an ABC correction that is ended in wave four at the 50% retracement. So if we're above this low of about 886, a little wider would be 813. And then Tesla should go the length of wave three, place at the wave four low, all the way to about 1590. Now, what if Tesla did go below this low? It still wouldn't be the end of the world. If Tesla did go below this low, I would be looking for this huge rally from this low that was formed in March to be a wave one. I would be looking for a wave two to be capped at the 61.8% retracement before Tesla explodes. So what I'm trying to show with Tesla even if it did break below 886, which I certainly would not bet on, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I would still be looking for this to be a wave one and a wave two. This is the more scenic route for bears, but I think it ends in an explosive rally regardless. And I would not be betting on that. I think a lot of Elliott Wave theorists will be betting on that. I think what's more accurate is that wave four is already in. We'll hold above 813. We'll hold even above 886, but I really want 813 to hold because that would show that this is a wave four, then the length of wave three placed at the wave four low could take Tesla on a wave five higher to about 1590. So that would be obviously very good for QCLN, ARK, ARKW, uh, the NASDAQ, a lot of growth stocks. And I think that, you know, it shows that even if there were more downside, the bears have a lot of work to do and they would fool a lot of people. Um, but to me, they wouldn't fool me. I would still be expecting that this is a huge wave one. I'd be looking for a wave two before Tesla explodes. That's the more scenic route for bears. I think the more accurate route is that this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a wave three and a wave four. Perhaps on the smaller degree, we're already within a wave five. This could be wave one away five. This could be wave two away five. We explode into wave three of wave five very shortly. So that's Tesla, that's Enphase Energy. Here's Enphase Energy right now. 
very similar idea i want to focus on the short-term degree i wasn't expecting the in-phase energy would get this deep especially after i predicted this big rally so what i predicted for uh, in-phase energy was that th this was a one two three four five wave one and a wave two so the length of wave one placed the wave too low would get met and that did get met so i believe that this deeper correction this deeper correction kind of rules out the idea uh, that we're looking for a wimpy wave five I think that this is a one, two, three, four, five waves impulse, a huge wave one, a wave two is ending at the 78.6% retracement. So a nice level right now, more important than anything on ICLN and TAN, which is why I included QCLN and why I'm focusing on Tesla and in-phase energy for the clean energy sector in this video, is that if we're above 108, the length of this rally placed at this low can take in-phase energy all the way up to 307. It lines up with Tesla. It lines up with a lot of growth stocks. It also lines up once again with the idea that losers, losers from 2021 could be the only thing giving money to bulls in the second half of the year. So that's just something that I'm thinking about. A lot of people say, oh, I'll never buy Facebook. I'll never buy Chinese stocks. I'll never buy this or that. For fund managers, it's not a choice, right? They're not sitting and you know debating, oh, am I going to buy oil stocks? They have to own oil stocks right now. If they turn in their report card uh, in March and they don't have any oil stocks on there, they didn't own oil stocks, they're not going to have a job in the second quarter. No one will let them manage money. That is called the alpha chase. And what we could see is that the Chinese stocks, the gross stocks, the precious metals on a larger scale take over the dominance in this market that the indices have had for a very long time. And it's not going to be a choice for fund managers. Oh, do I buy ARC? Oh, do I buy silver? If silver and ARC are outperforming and Chinese stocks are outperforming, they're going to have to own those stocks, right? Just like they have to own oil right now. So if we look at ARC, we look at ARC W, then I think this is just more emblematic of what I've been saying for a pretty long time. But even throughout this video is that this is wave one this is an abc wave two so being wrong is kind of part of trading it's kind of part of investing my bias was that we wouldn't break below the may low okay we did break below the may low but this is still a wave one and an abc wave two this is still the length of wave a place the way b high at the 61.8 percent retracement okay i wish i invented the golden ratio i didn't okay uh, a lot smarter people than me figured out the 61.8 percent retracement but I believe this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. I mean, that's the 61.8% fib of what is clearly an impulsive structure. So I know growth isn't very popular right now, but if it's the only thing giving money in the future, it'll be very popular. And what we have is a lot of evidence, I believe, from not only the software ETFs like PSJ, but also the e-commerce ETFs like ARCF, that this is an impulsive structure. This is an ABC correction and in a very scary, this certainly fits the bill of a scary wave two before an explosive wave three. And I believe the length of wave one places the wave too low. We don't even need to talk about that. But just getting arc above this wave one high, which I believe could happen in this year, especially in the second half of the year, just getting arc above this high is a substantial gain from the current levels. It's over 100% return and it's full of a lot of stocks that would likely be doing much better than that. So if we're above the 78.6% FIB, if Tesla's setup plays out, if PSJ, ONLN, and ARC F play out, I believe that ARC will reverse. This is a wave one. This is an ABC wave two. Oh, ARC's going to take over the world. You weren't wrong. The problem is a lot of retail traders thought that ARC was going to be easy. And that's, that's what they were wrong about. I don't think they were wrong about Nano Dimension. I don't think they're wrong about Roku. I don't think they're wrong about PayPal. I don't think they're wrong about Fastly. In fact, I think in 2020, they were right about all of those stocks. What they were wrong about was that those were going to be easy. This is a wave one and an ABC wave two. Trust me, Netflix was a lot worse. Amazon was a lot worse. Uh, Bitcoin has probably been a lot worse three or four times. But I think this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. If you'd bought Amazon in 2000, you would have sold it in 2001. You wouldn't have a lot of money. And I think this is a wave one. This is kind of Amazon in either 2001 or 2008. And what we could see is a decade of Roku and Tesla and PayPal and Square Cash kind of taking over the world. But a lot of retail traders just never bought them. So I think this is a wave one and the ABC wave two. I think what we're going to see, we're going to see ARC hold above 60. More importantly, we'll see PSJ, ONLN, and ARC F play out. We're going to see a pretty substantial reversal. 
And then it's not really going to be a choice for fund managers. Oh, do I buy ARK? Do I buy ARK F? Do I like the fundamentals of these stocks? If they're outperforming, they're going to have to own them. And I think we're going to see ARK turn around, break above 159, and go substantially higher. I think we could see 159 get broken this year. ARK W, ARK W is a very pretty chart. It's a, a very pretty chart. This is a wave one and a wave two. This is a huge wave one and an ABC wave two. We're at the 61.8% retracement. Okay, I didn't invent the golden ratio. So if we're above the 78.6% FIB of 72, if we're above the wave one high of 72, this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. This is an ETF full of growth stocks. And what we could see, the entire ARC sector, like the precious metals, like the Chinese stocks, they go from losers to leaders very quickly. It could certainly happen in a period where the indices are seeing a lot of money flown out of them. And I think that the money is going to flow into growth. It's going to flow into foreign markets and precious metals. I believe this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. I believe retail was correct that a lot of stocks were going to take over the world, but they were wrong that they were going to be easy to hold. And I think the 61.8% retracement produces a pretty significant reaction. The 78.6% retracement of 72 lines up with the wave one high. Above these levels in 2022, ARC W can turn around with ARC, make a new high, and lead the alpha chase in the second half of the year.